Absolutely, that is what we're given to understand, that uh, similar to what we saw with the Swachh Bharat mission, Mission Life is likely to be one of the marquee uh, campaigns, initiatives of the government. And as Parikshit was pointing out, it's likely to get a priority in Budget 2023 as well. Well, staying with the budget corner industry body, FIKI has also submitted its recommendations to the Finance Ministry. They've suggested continuing the thrust on capital expenditure, further boost to digitization and the green economy, among others. Joining us now is Shubhrakant Panda, the president-elect of FIKI. Uh, Shubhrakant, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, the budget consultation process is underway. FIKI has made its representations to both the finance minister as well as the revenue secretary. Uh, you know, as we just heard there from Parikshit, uh, perhaps the thrust in the budget is going to be on mission life, on the green budget, so to speak. Take us through the key recommendations that FIKI has proposed to the government this time around? Uh, good afternoon, Shireen. Uh, yes, we have had a couple of uh, interactions yesterday, both with the finance minister as well as with the incoming uh, revenue secretary. And, uh, you know, at a, at a broader level, as far as the finance minister's interaction was concerned, uh, what we have highlighted is the need to, to continue with the thrust on CapEx, uh, given the geopolitical uncertainties, given the fact that, uh, you know, private sector investment uh, uh, is is beginning to kick in, but will you know will will take some time to have impact. Therefore, I think it is it is important for the government to continue playing the positive role that it has been uh, in terms of investing in infrastructure, whether it is physical or uh, digital infrastructure. Uh, that is one aspect, and and to 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 continue with your theme on on a green economy. Uh, you know, it is important to to have a comprehensive uh, national policy framework. And uh, which includes a well-defined uh, standardized taxonomy for uh, sustainable financing. So that's what something that we've highlighted. And uh, in as much as uh, you know, uh, bolstering exports is concerned, uh, what we have what we have highlighted is the is the need to bring in some of the sectors which were left out uh, in terms of rod tap. Uh, I think a first step in that uh, in that direction has been taken with the reversal of the export duty on on steel and and stainless steel products. Uh, but we believe that uh, these sectors which were left out at the beginning, uh, because they were doing well, I think the circumstances have changed. And uh, not to forget that RODTEP has more to do with, uh, with not, uh, not uh, exporting uh, taxes and duties. Uh, we also had an had a interaction with, uh, with the incoming uh, uh, Revenue Secretary, and uh, where we have talked about uh, improving the manufacturing competitiveness uh, uh, through a, a, an extension of 115 BAB provision, which is the which is the concessional rate of taxation for manufacturing companies, as well as a simplification of uh, TDS and TCS measures to, to do away with, uh, you know, classification disputes. I could dwell on that a little bit more if you'd like me to. Well, thanks very much for giving us a quick snapshot of the key recommendations that have been put forward to the government. Of course, uh, I know that uh, neither the finance minister nor the incoming revenue secretary would have given you any feedback on what the trust areas are likely to be uh, as part of the budget consultation process. It's, this, is, this is the occasion uh, to hear from industry and not necessarily present any feedback. Uh, but what I want to also understand, Shubhrakant, at this point in time is uh, what's the, the mood across corporate India? In terms of business confidence, are you starting to see some degree of nervousness? Are you starting to see the mood change at all? Uh, you know, globally, uh, it, uh, we are now in a uh, phase where not just the tech companies, but outside of the tech universe as well, people are starting to talk about layoffs. If they haven't announced them already, uh, they are likely to announce them. That's the indication. What is the sense that you get uh, post-conversations with your members about business confidence at this point in time? Well, first, let me start out with the fact that, you know, there is general, uh, you know, general uh, consensus that India has done well in, in very difficult circumstances. And, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, it, uh, even going back to the time that we interacted uh, with various people in, uh, during a trip to Washington, D.C. last month, that there is, you know, there is consensus that India will be uh, the engine of growth going ahead, given that it is the fastest growing large economy. But having said that, we are certainly not an island. We are certainly not totally decoupled from the rest of the world. And to that extent, the I mean, geopolitical developments uh, playing out the way they are, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, as well as the continued zero COVID policy in China, uh, you know, these are all having uh, having effects. And of course, Europe is 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 quite severely affected by uh, you know by all of this and and inflation in, in double digits in 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 economies like Germany and and uh, UK, which is not something one would have ordinarily assumed. So, uh, you know, given all of that, there is bound to be an impact on, on India. You're starting to see that, I guess, a little bit in terms of the contraction in trade figures after quite a, 
quite a sustained period of growth. Uh, and uh, from that point of view, you know, we believe that, um, uh, you know, India has the means to, 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 to go through this in a, in a reasonable manner, given that we are better prepared than we have ever been uh, in terms of an impending uh, crisis, if I were almost to call it that, um, as well as the fact that, uh, you know, there is revenue mm. buoyancy, which will, uh, which will allow the, the finance minister to, to present a, a budget which is supportive of growth, which is what we believe will happen. But yes, I mean, there is a little bit of anxiety amongst our members because given what is happening around the world, and as I said, you know, we are not, uh, I mean, we may be in a good mm. position than we have ever been before, but we are certainly not decoupled entirely from the world. And yeah. so there is that little bit of anxiety and, and something or the other has to give in terms of geopolitical developments. And uh, hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. Mm. Uh, you know, Shubhrakant, uh, I'm going to end by asking you exactly that. You said that there is a little bit of anxiety at this point in time. You know, uh, in an industry meeting uh, a few weeks ago, the finance minister, or at least about a month or so ago, the finance minister had uh, exhorted to industry that, look, what's stopping you from investing? India is relatively better poised. This is the time to go out there and invest. Now, as per the pulse checks that have happened across industry the last time, uh, you know, we spoke with you, etc., the view was that it's still wait and watch because capacity utilization across most sectors is still about 60 to 70 percent. Uh, and fresh capacity at this point in time, uh, members that we spoke with suggested that they would still wait another six months before taking a call on that. Does that continue to be the case? Are we likely to see people hold back on adding capacity, making any fresh investments? Well, you know, as far as holding back is concerned, I think that may have to do a little bit with, with anxiety about how geopolitical developments are playing out. But actually, if you go back to the FIKI manufacturing survey, which was, uh, which was released, uh, I think, about a couple of weeks ago, if I remember correctly, there is, there is confidence in the manufacturing sector that India is doing well, and that positivity is likely to, to, be, to continue uh, going ahead. But, uh, you know, to, to sort of weave in both points and, and uh, bring in the point, uh, bring in a point that we, that we made to the, to the incoming revenue secretary yesterday, uh, we believe that, you know, India has done a lot to, to support manufacturing competitiveness, to bring down the cost of doing business, to improve the ease of doing business. Uh, and in this context, one, you know, something that we've suggested with regard to 115 BAB, which is the concessional rate of, uh, of um, uh, taxation for manufacturing companies, is not to, you know, not to extend it for a year or two like we have been asking in the past and on account of COVID, but actually, you know, give a five-year window for, uh, for uh, global supply chains to move in. Uh, you know, India is, is uh, again, geopolitics uh, means that China plus one is back on the table. Uh, I think India has an opportunity to attract uh, uh, global uh, supply chains, is doing so. But if you were to look at the competitive landscape in terms of uh, Thailand, Vietnam, et cetera, uh, where the you know where taxes are in the range of 18 to 20 percent, uh, I think it is important for uh, for uh, the 115 yeah. BAB provision to be available. And keep in mind that uh, I think uh, large multinationals are very keenly looking at moving supply chains out of uh, China uh, to an, to a large extent. Uh, I think India will be a beneficiary of that. But these are decisions which are not taken uh, easily. Yeah. Uh, these are decisions uh, you know these are decisions which will take time to play out. So, you know, rather than, than increase this, uh, I mean, the extend mm. this um, concessional tra tax uh, taxation regime in drips and uh, uh, drabs, it's, it's much better to have a clear, clean five-year window mm. and say, this is the opportunity for, for India to, to, to climb the manufacturing bus, which is what the, what the Prime Minister has made clear, that we missed the bus once before and we will do everything that it takes to, to, to make sure we don't, right. uh, you know, we, we don't miss out again. And, and for the benefit of our viewers, this is the 15% concessional tax rate that you're speaking of. That's right, yes. And we have also asked for that to be, to be extended to, to, uh, to R&D uh, uh, companies, research and innovation-based industries, because I think in due course, we have to mm. not just look at Make in India, which, is doing very, which, is, which has the potential to do very well, uh, right. but I think we have to graduate to, to design in India, to innovate in India uh, as well. Well, that's the big ask there from Fiki, suggesting that the 15% concessional rate of tax, which had been announced pre-COVID, that continue uh, for another five years. Of course, the sunset hasn't happened yet, but the Fiki view is that it shouldn't be extended by another year or two, but give visibility on another five-year extension 
to potential investors who are looking at alternatives from a manufacturing perspective, the China plus one strategy, they believe this could help in drawing in investors to India. Shubhrakant Panda, always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC 2018. We also spoke with Sake Dalmia, the president of the